Uh, I spent about five years as the co-leader of the Robin Hood Foundation in New York, and I visited every soup kitchen, every homeless shelter, every program for people with AIDS, and I got very interested in how to help people survive poverty in New York, but in particular, I was interested in how to break the cycle of poverty and how education can play a role in that. And for a while, I was visiting every single after-school program in New York City and kept thinking that after-school programs at their very best were trying to mop up for the messes that were being made in school during the day. So I started visiting all sorts of um, schools and more schools than just about anybody I knew. And most of the district public schools that I visited felt to me chaotic and unsafe. And I kept thinking there's gotta be a better way. And I visited all these low tuition private schools serving poor kids and felt that those were uh, mission driven and doing a good job for small communities, but they were not sustainable. They were not serving the poorest of the poor. And I walked away from my job and moved to New Jersey and started walking around for a couple of years just saying out loud, I'm going to start a school. Um, I didn't really know what I was saying or what I was going to do, um, but that was what I wanted to do, to make a difference in the lives of low-income students. And um, one day somebody told me, you should call this guy James Verrilli. He's thinking about something very similar. So I went up, I was a freelance writer at the time, and I went up to my garret and called uh, this phone number that had been given to me and said, hello, this is Norman Atkins, I'm looking for James Verrilli. And the voice on the other end of the line said, this is the strangest moment of my entire life. Um, Jamie had been the, a teacher and a principal at one of these low tuition private schools in the middle of Newark, about a block and a half from the epicenter of the riots. And um, he had gone to the desk in his school and on the desk was a telephone and a little piece of paper that had my name and phone number, uh, and he was just about to call me. And I, when I um, heard uh, what he was interested in, I made a beeline for his school in Newark and watched him teach, and was one of the greatest teachers that I'd ever seen in my life. He was wearing a big chef's hat, and uh, half the class, these were eighth graders, half the class was making um, fondue, and half the class was making uh, mixed salad. And uh, they were doing this for about 15 minutes. And he asked them then, which was a better metaphor for the early 20th century immigration experience in the United States, the fondue or the mixed salad? And there ensued this very rich conversation, which transitioned to students doing AP level document-based questions. And um, I was smitten. And uh, we went and met at a uh, restaurant in Newark for about four hours and realized that we agreed on about three quarters of the issues in education that we cared about and that was good enough for me because he had all this rich experience working in a school and I had none and decided that uh, we were going to work together. He explained to me that charter schools was something that had been started in um, Minnesota in 1991. This would have been January of 96 and New Jersey had just the governor of New Jersey had just signed a law creating charter schools in the state of New Jersey, and we decided to work together and started one of the first charter schools in the state, which opened in September of 1997, North Star Academy. Jamie didn't want to run a school all by himself, and yet had rich experience as a teacher and a leader, and um, I, wanted to, um, I wanted to figure out how to run the school of his dreams and to figure out how to make a school that was going to endure for low-income kids. If I doubted my own ability to run a long-distance race, I was confident that he was going to be there for the long haul and that would be the right thing to do for kids of Newark. I think he wanted to start with seventh graders and I wanted to start with kindergartners and we compromised at fifth grade and uh, he was very clear that Newark was a place where he'd been working for a dozen years and wanted to concentrate his efforts there and uh, introduced me to um, a dozen or so families, parents and kids who he had worked with over the years and we put together a team of folks who um, quickly figured out that uh, downtown Newark was the ideal place to put the school because all public bus lines met downtown and the parents figured out that North Star Academy would be the right name for the school, uh, adopting the, uh, the symbol uh, Fred, from Frederick Douglass from the, uh, the newspaper that he had started as an abolitionist during the times of uh, slavery and the Civil War. 
I realized that Jamie wasn't certified to be the principal of the school, and even though my background was in nonprofit management, that I could uh, use my time and energy to go get uh, certified. So I ran down to Columbia Teachers College and did a very quick master's in educational administration there. And each paper that I wrote for my courses had to do with part of the charter application that we put together for the state. And uh, I also went out and started visiting as many other schools as I could find. One of the big influences was uh, De La Salle Academy, which was a school at the time started by Brother Brian Cardi, one of the Christian brothers, on the fourth floor of the uh, Holy Name School at 97th and Amsterdam in the city. And there you could see a manifestation of love in community meetings and the way in which they would stitch together uh, a learning community. Uh, very, very influential. Had a chance to go visit uh, Dave Levin and Kip which was also signally important in high expectations and what you could do in terms of creating a great school that got results for uh, low-income students. And visited um, other, other schools, but those are the ones that uh, I remember the best. So I remember on the first day of school in September, it was probably the day after Labor Day in September of 1997, there must have been 20 reporters that were TV cameras and photographers and journalists, and um, people were curious to know what a charter school was going to be. And uh, we felt that this was the R&D arm of public education, and that we really wanted the work that we were doing to help create more opportunities for low-income kids in public schools across uh, Newark and New Jersey and the United States. And so we were really eager to have people come and see what we were doing. And we were also eager to get feedback about how we could be better. So we probably had thousands of visitors uh, in the early years. And people would come to the morning circle. And then they would go around and visit classes. And I felt a bit like a tour guide in the early years. Um, but I also benefited from going around and visiting other schools and standing in the back of the school in the classrooms of other people who are doing similar work. And in this way, I think we all learned from each other and figured out how to make our schools better and better. You know, the history of public education is about teachers going into classrooms and closing their door and being lonely and private with their students. Principals even uh, aren't routinely visiting uh, classrooms and giving teachers feedback. And I think blowing those doors open was one of the greatest contributions that we were able to make. And creating a learning lab and community uh, within Uncommon Schools and eventually in other charter schools was really helpful in spreading the, the work that we, were, that we were doing and the learning that we were able to do in other places. In the early years, we really thought that we could build schools only one grade level at a time. But when you build really strong systems, it gives you more faith that you can start a whole school at one time. And then we were pushed by the superintendent of Newark to do a school turnaround where the adults left and new adults from Uncommon came in. And um, that was really powerful. I think that um, Juliana's leadership of that school and applying our systems and culture and best thinking to that school showed us that um, uh, turning around schools is possible and has given us more faith to go into communities like Camden to go do that work. I think the next frontier is to partner with district public schools and figure out how to support superintendents and district schools to be able to do similar work within the contours of the regular district school setup. In the early days, there's a woman named Kim Smith who's about to be inducted in the Charter School Hall of Fame. She had um, her father was a professor of education at Columbia Teachers College, and she was the uh, founding leader of the New Schools Venture Fund. And I remember having uh, a meal with her back in 1998, and she described it as coopetition. And I didn't really know what that meant, but it was kind of a cross between cooperation and competition, which is to say that the drive toward excellence and trying to be the best would help everybody, but at the same time, we wanted to do that in a cooperative spirit, that the work that we're trying to do is so enormously challenging and the stakes are so high and the motive is for purpose, not for profit. And so we were unabashed about taking the best ideas from each other and unabashed about sharing uh, in return. And that 
um, that proved to be a winning formula for a lot of a lot of us, and um, and so that was kind of baked into the to the DNA of our work. Uh, I love North Star. I, lo I, I love going to the original school, but I love now going to. There's 4,500 kids in North Star schools, up from 72, and there's 16,000 students across uncommon schools, up from those original 72, and. Um, it's a uh, it's a real it's a real kick to see it growing, and there's also I feel a lot of urgency about continuing to grow the work with in Uncommon, and to also share the work that uh, that Uncommon's doing through Relay with uh, teachers and principals all across the United States. Linda Brown is the godmother of charter schools. Um, she. Um, she was an early champion of uh, the work that was done, particularly in Boston, at uh, many of the schools that were founded by my colleagues. And through Building Excellence Schools and the Building Excellence Schools Fellowship, she shared the excellence that was created by those Boston charter schools and by Uncommon Schools and our playbooks with uh, school founders across the country and the charter movement uh, owes her a huge debt of gratitude. Um, I had founded Uncommon Schools um, and uh, Dave Levin had founded KIPP and we found ourselves um, interviewing the same people for jobs and we found ourselves looking at each other's schools and experience to try to improve the work that we were doing and uh, one day we were having, one evening we were having uh, a beer and um, talked about how we could essentially do more and better work together than fighting with each other over the limited uh, talent and resources that were out there uh, and hatched an idea of training teachers and eventually training school leaders together um, to benefit Uncommon and KIPP and Achievement First in the charter sector in the short run, but really our vision in the long run was to share the work that uh, we were doing in the systems that we had created with uh, charter and district public schools uh, in New York and eventually across the country. And um, we had originally thought about doing this work and building some kind of academy on Governor's Island just south of Manhattan and then just um, started working on the idea and uh, the Governor's Island piece of it uh, fell through, at least at the time, and we have uh, subsequently built uh, what we first called Teacher U and eventually called Relay, a graduate school of education uh, in New York and 12 other cities around the country. So we went to, um, we had, it was an audacious idea that we would start uh, training teachers at scale, particularly because in the state of New York, um, really certification is connected to um, higher education and to master's degrees. And so by saying that we wanted to train novice teachers in particular and prepare new teachers, we were essentially saying that we wanted to train them for certification and train them for master's degrees. And so we went on a tour of, it was about a dozen uh, universities and colleges and talked to presidents of universities and deans of schools of education and um, met with um, a fair amount of skepticism and uh, advice. I remember particularly Arthur Levine, who was then president of Columbia Teachers College, who encouraged us to um, work with um, um, an out-of-the-way, small, potentially um, not, not financially stable institution. Um, and um, we eventually came across David Steiner, who at the time was the dean of the School of Education at Hunter College and eventually became the commissioner of education uh, for the state of New York and is now a, uh, a professor and director of an institute at Johns Hopkins University. And David was essentially waiting for us with open arms. So rather than hearing from him skepticism and concern about how our idea wouldn't work, he uh, was pitching the idea that we partner with him and his colleagues at Hunter College and build what we call Teacher U at Hunter College there. Um, and that's how we got, that's how we got started. Other, other higher ed institutions um, uh, could not get their head around releasing 
some kind of um, control and creating a lab or a new way of doing things within their existing institution. Their uh, faculty had pride of uh, of their work, and um, so trying to do what we wanted to do within those existing institutions um, was, was, was challenging. And that's why Hunter College proved to be such a terrific launch pad, because David and the president, Jennifer Rabb, and the department chairs at Hunter College were wide open to working with us. The main thing is that um, for a hundred years, um, schools of education were mostly training undergraduates in large number in a program that was theory-based and was not um, clinically rich, did not have a lot of practice, and wasn't focused on teaching the techniques uh, and practices that teachers would need uh, to make their instruction effective right away. That um, schools of education tended to eschew classroom management in favor of engagement techniques, but teachers who couldn't manage their classrooms, and something like three quarters of teachers reported that they didn't feel like they could manage, their, they weren't prepared to manage their classrooms, couldn't get to the point of engagement. And so um, we were very practical um, in the way in which we were training our teachers in our schools, and we wanted to bring those systems to bear on teacher preparation, while at the same time going deep on uh, content and content pedagogy, deep on mindset, deep on a lot of things that would help uh, teachers to have an intellectual framework for the work that they were going to do, but always grounding it in practice. As great as our experience was uh, with, uh, with Hunter College, and really it gave us, it gave us uh, a launch, um, it was uh, financially challenging because Hunter College collected the tuition and we uh, had the lion's share of the expenses. Um, we did not have the freedom to innovate maximally beyond the contours of the course of studies that had been approved by the um, state. And in particular, uh, our program to train high school teachers was subject to the Faculty of Arts and Sciences uh, at Hunter College, and over the long run, we did not have control over our destiny, and so we went to the state of New York and applied for a charter to be a new independent and eventually accredited institution of higher education. Relay is right now 2,000 teachers in 12 states around the country. We have campuses, uh, or sorry, Relay is now 2,000 teachers in 12 cities around the country. And in addition, there are 400 principals and principal supervisors in a national academy that's reaching uh, folks in 20 states around the country. And um, there are now other um, charter-inspired, mostly charter-inspired programs that are themselves uh, working and developing programs for training teachers within higher education. I think of Aspire U in California. I think of Match in Boston, which has created the Sposado Graduate School of Education, um, and there are and there are others. So this is uh, this is a promising development in the develop in training teachers and principals. I, I had started a, a a small charter school in uh, in Newark, North Star Academy, and had also started uh, Uncommon Schools as a proto-charter organization and didn't really know how it was going to develop. And one of the um, surprises was uh, that when Joel became the chancellor of New York City Public Schools, he issued an open invitation to people like me to take our small charter schools and grow them within the New York City Public Schools. And instead of um, looking for um, real estate, he opened up um, empty New York City public school buildings for us to be able to operate. And uh, it was a winning invitation and I used that as a way to get people like Evan and John um, um, and Brett to come to New York and open up well, uncommon schools within the New York City public schools. And uh, uh, Joel, Joel really drove that and made that happen. It's why a lot of us are doing this work in New York City. Joel did not see charter schools as competition with the New York City public schools. He saw 
charter public schools that were doing a great job for low-income kids as a way for him to offer some of the 1.1 million New York City public school students an opportunity to get a better education.